Uh, first of all, I would like to appreciate Hurlich and all of our organizers for this event who's provided us this opportunity to get together from different countries and sharing our knowledge and experiences with, with each other. My presentation has uh, two parts. In the first part, I'm going to describe a little bit about organic movement in Iran in order to give you a perspective, uh, uh, information about uh, organic uh, status, in, in status in Iran. And also in the second part, I'm going to focus more on contentious inputs and some other contentious issues which are not included in this program, but I hope in the future we could uh, consider those. Uh, I would like to start my presentation with uh, this slide. You know that for developing organic agriculture in any country or any region, uh, we need uh, some criteria, we need to implement something in order to get more success. For example, the first one, the most important one, is production potential, which is based on the geographical condition, endemic uh, genotypes for plants or animals or something like that. And the others are uh, market development for organic products, extension services, which could be provided by the government, and also uh, research activity, as well as certification procedure for that area. Uh, and I'm going to describe something about all these issues in my country in Iran. About uh, the production potential, you know that Iran is located uh, in the center part of Asia, in the Middle East of Asia, with very good market access to the countries in East of Asia, to the Central Asian countries, to Arabic countries, and with four hours flight to European countries, which means that we can import, export a lot of agricultural products. And uh, there is a varied climatic condition in Iran, for example, uh, for example, uh, here in, in north of Iran, we have Caspian Sea, uh, and the provinces in this area have more than 1,500 millimeters precipitation per year, while uh, in the center, we have desert with maximum 100 millimeters precipitation per year. And in the south, also, we have Caspian Sea. It provided uh, 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 a varied climatic conditions, so we can produce different types of plants uh, and horticultural crops uh, in this in this uh, area. Uh, but uh, regarding to the philosophy of organic agriculture, we have to focus on our uh, local products, even in animal products or in uh, plant production. Here you can see one of the most famous products of Iran, which is saffron. And uh, mm, saffron is uh, one of the local endemic plant in Iran, which is located in the center part of ecological niche of this product, as well as other products, which I'm going to talk about them. Uh, out of 250 ton, uh, 50 ton uh, production per year as, at the world level, 230 ton per year is producing in Iran, in, across the world. And it is a very precious uh, product, and one kilogram is uh, more than $1,700. Uh, we say red gold in, 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 in Iran. And also, this is a great uh, uh, plant uh, for shifting to uh, management of organic production. And we have already several certified saffron producers at, at the country which uh, produce their product according to EU organic regulation. And they are exporting their product to different European countries. Another uh, specific product of the country is pomegranate. We have a great variation of pomegranate at the country, more than uh, 700, 760 genotypes of pomegranate across the country we can find. Different types in the forest or cultivated everywhere we can find uh, pomegranate. And more than 1 million ton per year we have uh, pomegranate production. And also, again, several uh, pomegranate uh, farmers, pomegranate producers, uh, certified according to EU regulation and also according to uh, NOP for, for exporting to the United States. And also they export uh, their products to Japan, to Canada, and some other European countries. 
another famous uh, uh, product of Iran is uh, rose flower, which we extract uh, ro rose, uh, rose uh, water from these flowers, and it is very common in Persian cuisine, Persian dishes. We use it for cooking, for baking, and uh, it has been already certified by Soil Association from, from, from England. Uh, besides all these uh, cultivated uh, products, there is a great potential for wild collection in Iran about pistachio. You know that uh, pistachio is another famous product of I Iran. And in north uh, uh, east of Iran, close to Turkmenistan, close to Afghanistan, there is a unique ecological area with more than uh, 15,000 hectares, wild uh, forests of uh, pistachio. You can see here uh, one of the view of this forest. And this forest also uh, certified according to EU regulation four years ago. And they can export their products uh, to other countries for, uh, for different uh, uses. Uh, as well as Wild types of uh, pistachio, we have uh, more than 584,000 hectares uh, pistachio orchard in the country, and we have several, again, several certified uh, pistachio producer uh, as the orchard, not, not wild type, but as the orchard. So you can see different types of pistachio in Iran, which are, are very famous in the, in the market. Not only in, the, in, in Iran, but also in the international market, they are very famous. There are different types of pistachio. Uh, in Iran, uh, in 2009, the first uh, version of national guideline for organic uh, production and labeling uh, has been released uh, by the uh, Institute of Standards and Industrial Research of Iran, and we have already six uh, accredited inspection by the company in Iran by our National Accreditation Center of Iran, and also it provided this opportunity for uh, some stakeholders. Now we have uh, around 67 organic shops across the country, which are recognized shops, and the consumers are uh, uh, can, can make sure that the, the product which, uh, which they can purchase are really organic. Uh, on the other hand, uh, at the Ministry of Agriculture, uh, they have recently uh, provided Iran's organic system plan, in which you can find uh, the rule of different disciplines uh, even uh, private sectors, uh, governmental sectors, or activists, producers, inspection bodies, certification bodies in this uh, plan, which created a kind of uh, a regulation for all activists in organic production across the country. And uh, here is the statistics, which recently released by IFOM and Feeble. Uh, at 2018, these are the most recently statistics about the organic production of all countries and Iran also included. We have more than 18,000 hectares agricultural land, cultivated area for organic products. And also beside it, we have more than 30,000 hectares for wild collection and in total, uh, more than uh, 49,000 hectares under organic management. And Another statistics here show that in Iran, we have more than uh, 3,800 organic farmers. It shows that uh, organic is becoming more popular. For, uh, the farmers are becoming more interested to change their management into organic um, systems. We have uh, 25 processors and also 33 exporters. Uh, one of the active NGOs. We have also NGOs for developing organic agriculture in Iran, but one of the uh, main active one is Iran Organic Association, which has been established around 11, 12 years ago. And I, uh, I'm a board member of this association as well. And we have organized several international conferences uh, for uh, regarding to the 
uh, trade and market development of organic products uh, with support of international uh, institutions and other companies, especially from European countries and United States. We have several guests, several uh, invited uh, lecturers from different countries, and you can see that uh, here uh, there is a great movement and in Iran Organic Association, we have more than 200 members across the country, which is a good number for this new movement. Uh, besides the local activity, we tried to be involved in international activity. Here you can see the structure of the International Federation of Organic Agriculture Movement, IFOM. And in the right side, you can see different sector platforms with the specific activities. For example, iPhone Apiculture Forum, iPhone Aquaculture, iPhone Seed Platform, etc. And in the left side, you can see the regional bodies. Uh, it means that they are self-organized uh, uh, department or branches of, uh, of, of uh, iPhone in different regions. For example, iPhone. Uh, Latin America or I from Euro Asia, but you can see only three countries with the specific name of I from I from France, I from Iran, and I from Japan. We established I from uh, Iran in 2014, and it 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 it, it is uh, provided a good opportunity for the traders, for for producers, and opened a lot of windows for them to get uh, international uh, market access. And uh, some of the producers now are participating in Biofach International Fair for Organic Products. And on the other hand, in order to increase the people awareness and consumer awareness about the organic pro products, about the health issue, about the environmental issue, we tried to make an agreement with the municipality of Tehran. And we have a fixed event yearly uh, with the name of uh, Organic Week Festival, Tehran Organic Week Festival. Every year in December, one week everywhere in the whole city, there are a lot of signs about organic. And it means that we are trying to, to define the organic, uh, the real meaning of organic for, for the people in the city and also in the media. And this is the last one which Thomas Sirka from iPhone also participated and gave us a lecture. And you can see a lot of young people around us which are very interested for this movement and for these issues. Well, the first part is finished and I'm going to focus for the second part about the contentious uh, inputs. Uh, fortunately, it's a great opportunity for European countries uh, when, when European Council uh, provided this long-term strategy for European agricultural research and innovation by 2020 and beyond, in which you can find a lot of supports for or developing organic agriculture. And I do believe that uh, this uh, event, this uh, uh, meeting is also part of this, uh, uh, part of this program, uh, which would be very useful for European countries. Uh, at this part, I would like to mention about uh, some basic issues related to organic agriculture. You know that uh, organic agriculture is quite new, a little bit, I can say, 100 years old. Uh, and when the pioneers started to explain uh, the issues related to organic agriculture, the issues much more related to ethical issues. And we can say sometimes organic agriculture as ethical farming system, something like this. And it was based on agroecological issues. But now in the modern world where we are living, the agribusiness issues is much more dominant for organic production systems. The, uh, the people always talk about the price, they talk about the uh, standards or certification or something like that. And it means that we are a little bit far from the, the main uh, philosophy of the organic agriculture. However, from business view, we need to uh, what criteria makes organic organic. Here I listed some of the most important issues. We need practice-based standards on site inspection and certification, required organic system plan, and use of only 
uh, a lot of substances which are talking about these issues for, for these, these two days from business view. And on the other hand, from ethical view and from environmental view, you can see the other issues which we can consider in many other organic ad advertisement. But uh, I would like to mention another word here uh, when we talk about organic agriculture from the agribusiness view, it's like uh, codified principles because we have to follow the rules, we have to follow the standards, we have to follow the re regulations which are already established, with, which are already explained in, in different uh, standards, even national standards, regional standards, or international standards. But as a scientist, I do believe that there is still a big gap. The big gap about the knowledge of the scientists who wants to work, who wants to do research in organic agriculture. And there is an urgent need for harmonization of scientific research based on organic production corresponding with the standards and regulation. Many of the researchers uh, are not very familiar with the details of the standards. For example, as the editor of the Journal of Organic Agriculture, we received several manuscripts from different countries with the title of Organic Agriculture while they did their research in conventional fields. So they need to know more about the details, about the conditions of organic situation. So I can say we need some harmonization between the scientists' knowledge and the regulation and the standards. Uh, again, I would like to add another uh, contentious issues rather than contentious uh, inputs here. Sometimes we have some words across the, across the world uh, which bring some confusing for the consumer. When we talk about the science, when we talk about the organic production, sometimes we forget the consumer's attitudes. We have to consider this. For example, you can see a list of uh, words regarding to organic agriculture in different languages in different countries. Among them, these two words are much more common. Organic is usually used in, uh, in the countries with English language, language, but bio usually or bio usually used in other countries, European countries with other languages. And in the principle of organic agriculture described by iPhone, we know that organic comes from organism from different aspects. I'm not going to go on the details, but I, I'm sure that you all know. But on the other hand, we see this word, bio, in many other places, especially when biotech companies want to, to advertise their products. Uh, for example, Monsanto, which is very well known for biotech products, genetically modified organisms, something like that, we always see this word everywhere. So this is one of the contentious issue, which, which, we, which, which we should consider this for the future. And it happens in my country. I know many people, and also I realized in Philippines when I had to travel there, I realized in Canada, as Martina mentioned, uh, the, the biotech companies always try to use this type of word in order to make the people satisfied to purchase their product. And it's a word of, and the word of bio is a very vast field. You can find it everywhere, bio, 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 biotechnology or biomedical, something like this. So people listen and hear this word many times uh, in several places, but they cannot distinguish uh, which bio means organic, which bio is come from biotech company. Uh, another, uh, another confusing word is like this, healthy food, natural foods, organic foods. What are the difference between these? And it's not only belong to the uh, food market, also in chemical markets, for pharmaceutical, for uh, other products. When we go to the supermarket or uh, to the grocery stores or uh, to the pharmacy, something like that, we will confuse with lots of words. Very similar, natural or 
bio or eco or green, something like that. It means that the industries, not only the food industry, but also uh, chemical industry is, uh, is trying to commercialize health for the people in order to get their attention to, to purchase their product. But in some cases, some of these products with the name of the green or eco or bio or something like that uh, contain uh, toxic material. Uh, regarding to the organic, uh, regarding to the contentious inputs, the use of copper and mineral oils. Here you can find a page of the EU organic regulation in which it has been already clearly mentioned about application of copper and also mineral oils, but there is a limitation for using this. Also, we are allowed to use it, but there is a limitation. For example, up to six kilogram copper per hectare per year. Or for mineral oils, there are specific types of trees or plants which we are allowed, uh, allowed to use uh, these substances for them as insecticides or fungicide. But in case, if we are looking for some alternatives, I would suggest vegetable oils instead of mineral oils. We can extract uh, different substances from plant materials. For example, you know that uh, pyrethrum from pyrethrum, uh, azadurachtin from neem, uh, carbon from karabi, mustard, horseradish, and some other extracts which we could uh, use for, uh, which we could use against the uh, pests or some kinds of disease. And all these already. Uh, 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 studied by other scientists, and you can see here some resources for it. Another alternative which we could use is potassium bicarbonate for controlling powdery mildew. mildew. It's not very difficult to find something for replacement or alternative uh, for, for copper. And it, it is also already uh, tested with other scientists. Use of ketosan. Do you know what ketosan is? It comes from the skin of the, for example, shrimp or some, some sea, sea animal, something like this. It's like a biopolymer, and it, we, we, we could use it against a variety of pathogens. It comes from the nature. Uh, regarding to synthetic vitamins and uh, pro-vitamins for animal production, again, in the Article 3, Article 4, in the EU organic regulation, it has been already clearly described about the animal welfare practices, enhanced immune system, and something like that. And regarding to the feeding animal, it has clearly mentioned about the source of this feeding. At least 50% of the food is from the farm unit itself, or it is produced in cooperation with other organic farms of the same region or animal feed additives may be used in organic production only if listed in Annex 6. Annex could be changed. We could add something. We could delete something in the future. But regarding to the source of vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, or something like that, uh, I did a quick search, and I found this uh, table in which we can find different types of uh, plants or forage in which we can provide the required vitamin for animal product production, which is allowed to use in organic farming systems. Uh, about animal-free fertilizers in uh, greenhouses, there are lots of, lots of, too many uh, products, even from sea products or uh, the other products uh, which we could uh, produce uh, around us, for example, rock phosphate or seaweed or wood ashes, something like that, which are totally allowed for uh, greenhouse production without any, any, any animal resources. And uh, again, as already mentioned, biochar is one of the most interesting uh, uh, substances currently in North America in some European countries for soil amendment. Yes, that was the issues which I try to prepare. And at the end, I would like to encourage you, because most of you are scientists, uh, I would like to encourage you to be part of the 
uh, or a member of the ISOFAR, which is the unique association for uh, gathering uh, organic scientists across the world. And also, please send us your news, the news about your activities. Please visit our website. You can find a lot of information about this. And also, as already Anna Christine mentioned, please send us your valuable manuscript for our peer review journal, Organic Agriculture. Thank you very much.